Hi, I'm Callum and today I'll be showing you round this 2016 Auto Trail Mohawk handover. In the locker, the wet locker, behind the driver's seat, to open this, if you just open it with the square key, put your foot underneath and instead of grabbing a hole, just lift up. And then inside, you've got your two leisure batteries and fuses for both batteries, main fuses for the batteries and you have your hookup point. So when you arrive at your site or when you're at home and you're charging the vehicle, to hook the vehicle up, pull the cover back and slide on. We always advise you hook the van up first, then the site, as we don't want you walking around with a live lead in the wet. Also, when I'm down here, you've got your waist, waist tap. So this is from your waist holding tank underneath. So normally on a site when leaving, if it's a um, caravan club, um, you would drive over the motorhome service bay and to deposit your waste, use the handle on the side and allow the water out, like so. If it's a smaller site, you've normally got to drive as close to the hole in the ground or the gully and you can let it out. You've also got some good storage underneath here for your hookah bleed when it's uh, wrapped up, your leveling ramps and so forth. So you've got your two fridge vent covers so your fridge is behind here, and in the winter, you'll, or the colder climates if you go abroad with the van, you'll want to put your fridge vent covers on, so you've got two covers like this. Simply clip on, like so, and then get a screwdriver and just turn these two clips and your fridge vents will stay securely on, this, on the fridge vent cover. You want to put these on, in the winter time just to protect the element of the fridge um, you can still use a van with them on um, as it doesn't affect the fridge once they're on it just keeps the element protected from the frost and both of them clip on like so so behind your fridge vent covers you've got your external shower so on one side you've got a trigger gun on the other side you've got a bullfinch fitting which simply pushes into the van you've got off and then you can turn it to your desired temperature so from cold to hot it's great for the bikes the boots the dogs the kids and then make sure the pumps on right okay to fill the vehicle up with fresh water this is your fresh water intake so this cap can be locked to stop people tampering with your water, should it be required. Put your hose pipe into here until it overflows if you want a full tank. Or if you, um, or you can see on the control panel inside that it goes up in increments of 25, 50, 75 and 100% of fresh water. If you are traveling and you are go going wild camping, you will have to take a full tank of fresh water with you. But if you are going to a site, we advise that you take um, a minimum of 20 litres um, as this keeps the weight of the vehicle down, improves the fuel economy and means that if you want to stop off for the toilet or a cup of tea, you've got water on board to do so. To drain your fresh water off. So when once you've finished... Um, your holiday and you've got fresh water on board and you want rid of it or you want to let some out simply drive over the motorhome service um, bay on the way out of the site open your tap normally you drive over a grid and let it out and um, if you are on a smaller site it could just be a gully or a, a um, down into a, a verge or a hedge um, but in the winter you want all the water out the van so you want this tank completely empty and your waist behind me completely empty as well. To open your garage, so put the key in, half a turn until the 
handle pops out and then you can turn them and open your garage. And in here you've got your carpets, you've got some Fiamma security rails so you can move them hooks down the rail to tie things down and tether it and stop it moving. You've got your light in the corner here, you've got your light which you touch the right side of it. This will work when the main control panel is switched on. But the main thing is over here. This is your drain tap for your boiler. So your boiler is in here. It holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter you don't want the water to freeze in the boiler. So when you're not using it in the colder months from, from when it gets cold. So say from October to spring. You want all the water out. So you just lift this tap, come in with no power on, so don't put the control panel on or the, or the pump because the pump will kick back in and simply lift it up and you'll hear the water cascade underneath the van. Leave it up like so when the vehicle is not in use so any water can make its way out of the boiler. When coming to reuse the van, lie the yellow toggle drain tap down, fill the van with water Put the pump on, go to the cold side on your tap first, you'll automatically get cold water, go to the hot side, it'll cough, it'll split, it'll make all sorts of noises. What that's doing is it's pushing the air out the top of the, out the boiler until it fills with water and you get a steady flow on each tap. The maximum of your garage load is 150 kilograms in the back because it's over the back axle. Coming. On the back of the vehicle, you've got your high-level brake light and built-in reverse camera just underneath. Behind here, you have your full-size spare wheel and open it. Use the little key that opens the water. Put it in, turn it, cover lifts off, lift this nut off, brings this um, fiberglass panel off and your spare wheel is underneath there. Below you've got your PWS um, rear protection bar, your tow bar for towing anything, car, trailer, and your 13 pin electrics. On the other side, so this is the passenger side of the vehicle, you've got your other access door to your garage. This is your Truma vent for your hot water. So when heating the hot water on gas, this cover here must come off. So to bring the cover off, um, apply a bit of pressure on the top, finger in the middle and peel it off. If this cover was to be left on when heating the water on gas, it will fail because it doesn't get the circulation round to allow the fumes out. So when on gas, this cover must come off. If you're on electric or you're traveling, you can put this cover back on. Behind, directly above your rear passenger side wheel, you have your service hatch for your cassette toilet. So your toilet's in here. That's where you do your business. This is where your business ends up. And to access the Fetford cassette, Make sure the slide and the trap door is closed on the inside of the toilet, which I'll show you in a minute, like so, and the cassette will come out. You will then have a, some wheels, so you can wheel it around the site instead of carrying it when it's full. To empty, take the grey cap off. Press the orange button. This allows a bit of air in, stops it glugging, and you can go to your waste disposal point which is normally beside your um, toilet block on site and tip it down once you've tipped it all out give it a rinse out again and then you can then put your cap full of liquid which the cap measures your liquid there so one cap full of that of green or blue liquid into here or if you are using the tablets pint of water in the um, cassette and then a one tablet straight down the toilet and it'll break up into the liquid. So 
So next to your cassette, you've got your external gas point. So this is where you'd plug in for your Kodak, your external barbecue. So this runs off the main bottles on board the vehicle, saving you carrying another one for an external barbecue. You've got a bullfinch connection which pushes into here and turns on and then you need a gas hose and two Jubilee clips to connect on the both ends of the connector and the barbecue. Coming down the vehicle, you've got your awning light and your awning. And the main point you're gonna need is you've got your gas. So this is where you can fit two 11 kilogram gas bottles. So to operate your gas, get the pigtail, put it on the bottle, left hand thread as tight as you can get with your hands and nip it up with a spanner, turn it on at the top of the bottle and then press one, two, three, and that allows the crash valve to open and into the van. And then one, two, three on the green button on the regulator, and that allows the gas to enter the van for your various items. We do advise you turn it off when travelling, but if you don't, this is a crash valve here and here, so if the gas was to escape or this pipe was to be severed, your gas would cut off automatically. Behind, in front of your gas bottles, behind your passenger door, you have your gas, uh, your diesel. This is where you put your diesel. So it opens with the ignition key, put it into here, turn, and then you can fill your van with diesel. Coming in the passenger door, on the slam panel there, you've got your tyre pressures. So it's 5.5 bar front and back, or 79.5 front and back. Underneath the passenger seat, if you lift this cover, you've got a toolkit. So if you lift the cover off, this toolkit will then become more accessible and be able to slide out. You've got a jackknife brace, a tow eye, and a screwdriver in there. So anything you need to change your wheel will be towed away. And underneath the floor, you have got your engine battery, but there is jumping points from underneath the bonnet. And while I'm speaking about the bonnet, your bonnet release is here on the side of the passenger dashboard. Coming round to the bonnet, to open it, your secondary catch is directly above the auto trail badge. And there you have your, so here you've got your weight plates, so this is when it was a chassis cab. This is when auto trail have got a hold of it and done a secondary stage conversion. So you've got your chassis number, you've got the vehicle's maximum gross vehicle weight is 4.4 tonne. If you were to tow anything with that tow bar, you can tow a combined of the van and whatever you're towing of 5, 6, 50 front and back axle weights. On here you've got your paint code, so if you ever need a touch up pen or you need paint to respray any panels on the cab in the blue, that's the paint code. These lift off for your mechanical services, you've got your um, brake fluid, radiator fluid, the main one you're going to need when you're travelling about is your screen wash which is in the corner there. You've got your oil and your oil dipstick here for checking your oil levels before you travel. You've got your earthen point for a jump start and you've got in here, this cover here, if you put the key or the screwdriver in the, this little flap here and pull the flap back You've got your positive for your red um, jump lead. So that's for giving or receiving a bump start. To operate your main control panel once on board, if you press the on button, you'll either get 12 volt if you are just off the leisure battery or if you are hooked up, you will get 230 volt. You can tell if you're hooked up by this little wavy line here that indicates you are hooked up. Next one, you've got the pump. So the pump surfaces the taps, the toilet, the exterior shower and interior shower. So you must have that on to surface your water, otherwise you'll just get whatever's left in the pipe. Then you have your master switch for all your down lights. Then they are all individually switched around the van. You have your awning light here, so this is a light outside above the door. 
You've got your dimmer. So this dims the light under here. By just pressing and holding, it will brighten and dim like so. Next to it, you have your power transfer button. So this transfers the power that the motorhome is running off. So at the minute, you want to keep it running off the leisure battery. If you press that, it will jump over to the engine battery. But I wouldn't advise this as it can flatten the engine battery and then you would require the breakdown service to come and bump start you. Next week you've got your tank heaters. So this is the, the heater in the exterior tanks underneath the chassis. And what it does is it puts a current through the water to stop it freezing. So if you are in the colder countries or you're away in the winter in the UK, put this on and it will stop the water from freezing. If you use these buttons here, you've got your main control panel. You've got your leisure battery reading and the amps. You've got the solar panel, which is bringing the amp, what the amps, the solar panel is bringing in, and the ampage there. On this, if you scroll up, you've got your vehicle battery reading, your leisure battery, your your fresh water, and your waste water. So you see here on board, we have got a 75% of fresh water. The leisure battery is at 13.5 volts, but we are hooked up, so that will give a true reading when unhooked up. And the vehicle battery is at 12.8. And we have no waste water on board, because I've just let it out. On the opposite side of your electric control panel, you have your Truma boiler on gas and your ultra heat heats the van on 230. So to operate your boiler on gas, this, is, this would be when the cover needs to come off on the exterior. You've got 50 degrees on the rocker switch, off in the middle or 70 degrees down to the bottom, like so. You will then hear it click and that's it igniting on gas. This heats the water to the desired temperature, so 50 or 70. Once it gets to that temperature, it will cut out. And then once the water drops from 70 degrees, it will kick back in and start to reheat the water. In the middle, you've got your light switch, which does the lights above the lockers in the front lounge. And then you've got your ultra heat here. So your ultra heat works by... So you've got off on the O. It works on 230, so it only works when hooked up. So... You've got 2,000 at the top, which is 2 kilowatts, and then you've got 1 to 9, which is the temperature. 9 is about 30 degrees. Then you've got half a kilowatt, which is 500 watts. So on some smaller sites, or if you're drawing too much of electric and you're tripping the van out, you may have to turn your heating down when you use a kettle or a toaster. Or you've got 1,000 watts, which is 1 kilowatt of heating. But normally in the UK, you can use 2,000, which is 2 kilowatts, and heat the van on electric, and don't waste your gas if you have paid your site fees. To operate your ultra heat fire, so this is heating the van on gas this side. So what you do is push down, turn, you've got one to five. You can see in the pilot hole here, and you'll hear it roll like so. That is now lit on gas. So if you are wild camping and you weren't near any hookup source, you'd have to heat the van on gas. On this side, you've got your 12 volt fan speed. So we've got one on the top, one to five. This is the, the fan speed. And then you've got A or M. O, A stands for automatic. So it will blow through the various parts of the van via the ducting. And once it gets to the desired temperature you've set, say 25 degrees, once the van hits 25 degrees, it will cut out. You can use this fan when you're heating on electric as well, but once it hits 25 degrees on automatic, it will cut out. Coming down to, and then we'll kick back in once it drops. 
Coming back to O, O means off, so it means it will convect out the front of the fire. This is great for when while camping because you don't want to waste um, your battery on a 12 volt fan, you just want to heat the van. So as long as it convex out the front, it will heat the van. Just be careful you don't catch yourself with any loose clothing or um, any pyjamas or things if you've got young children by the fire. Coming down to M, M is manual, so it will still blow through the ductings via various parts of the van, bathroom, the top here, kitchen area and the lounge. Once it hits the temperature, it will simply not cut out and it will continue to provide that heat. So this is great for when in the winter um, or if you want to keep the heat um, circulating around the van. To operate your Dometic fridge. So to turn the fridge on, press the on button. Like so, it's automatically went to hook up, as this is the first source it normally goes to. If you weren't hooked up, then it would flash and indicate and make a beep that you aren't hooked up. So you've got three sources here. So you've got 240 hook up when you are when the vehicle's hooked up. So on a site, if you, you would be hooked up while camping, you'd have to be on gas, so you'd put on it on the gas and it self ignites. We've got the battery setting, which is failed there because this only works when the engine is running. So it sends a small feed from the alternator to the fridge, and it basically keeps the fridge at the same temperature it was when you were when you departed. So the idea here is the night before, hook your van up, put your shopping in, let it get nice and cool when you sleep. And when you're ready to hit the road, put on a battery, no matter if you drive half an hour down the road or a long distance, the shopping should be nice and fresh while you get the site. Or if you've been to one site and you're travelling to another, pop it on a battery and it'll just keep the shopping nice and cool. On here you've got your temperature, so you've got from one dub out of two, getting colder, to till you have five bars there and that is the coldest setting. And then this just resets your fridge. In the winter months when you're not using the van you want to clean the fridge out get it nice and fresh maybe put one of them fridge air fresheners in just to keep it smelling good for when you come to reuse it and then you don't want to allow the door to shut fully so to allow the air to get into the fridge if you just press this button here and pull the tabs out this then stops the fridge door from shutting fully and it allows air around the seal. And you do also have a removable freezer compartment should you need to remove it. Two, two um, clips underneath here that you need to take out with a screwdriver and that lifts out. This has shown that your hot water is working so we've had your hot water on there. So that is, that's your hot water on. So make sure the pump's on. Like it is now when you get a steady flow and it's nice nice and warm there. When you do winterize, so you've drained your fresh tank off, you've drained your waste tank off, you've drained your boiler off, you need to leave your taps open so no power, no pump on in the middle position and it allows any water that's in the, the pipe to just dribble out and straight out your waste tank. Here you've got your lights, so you've got your lights for underneath your, underneath your kitchen and underneath your bench. And then you've got this light here, which is your, so you've got your splashback light and you've got your under counter light. And here you've got storage, so these are racks for cups and bowls, plates in there. And then this is your main socket for your microwave so it is just a 240 microwave only works when hooked up so it's not work it'll not work when while camping or unhooked up and it'll op operate the microwave once hooked up press the eco button it wakes it up and it is just a household microwave so if you should ever need to ever needs to be removed repaired replaced you can just take the plug out and feed it through the hole and then you can lift the microwave out. In here this is the storage for your chopping board slash drainer so that can go anywhere you want. Cover the sink if you want it as more prep space or it can go as a draining board. But when traveling it simply stores away in here. Like so below you've got your 
gas rings. We've got three gas. And coming here, you've got your electric sort. Small red dot indicates this is on only on 240, so that's a hot plate. Your grill, you've got your you've got your grill, so turn it on, allow the thermocouple to get warm before you release, and then that is away on gas. Tip is remove your grill pan and oven shelf when travelling because these can tend to make a, some noise if they are not wrapped up in tea towels or packed securely. Below you've got your oven, so operate your oven, you've got your igniter, got your oven there, allow the thermocouple to get warm before releasing and you've also got an oven light. Like I said, oven shelves out when travelling or wrapped up, stop the rattling. And then below the oven, if you just push the glass lid, what you've got in here is you've got your plug to this side for your electric hot plate so should you need to isolate that it's in the corner there and you've got some storage for some pots and pans it is intruded ever so slightly by the wheel arch in the cupboard next to the oven you've got your gas taps so these are your gas isolation taps so these are, if you have got a problem with gas, turn it off at the top of the bottle. But if you do want to isolate a gas appliance, so you've got your water, your boiler, gas barbecue outlet, your water heater, your cooker and your fridge, you can isolate them. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is serviced, habitation serviced. The technician will perform a gas test on all appliances. You've also got some storage so you've got storage there so in the drawers cutlery in the top one there so you've got a built-in cutlery tray in the back of the vehicle just underneath the bed you've got your Truma electric boiler so this is the boiler on electric so you've got off in the mo in the middle you've got one kilowatt at the top and two kilowatts at the bottom when the water hits the desired temperature selected in the boiler, it will cut out before it kicks back in when it drops to heat the water. And that's heating the water on electric. To operate the skylight above the rear double bed, press the, the button in, pull the bar forward. This opens it fully, or you can pull it and put it into the grooves, like, like so. When traveling, do make sure it's closed fully and securely and then you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind for on a night time when you're underneath on the bed. In the rear on the driver's side in the bedroom at the back you have your points there for your satellite 12 volt and 240 so if you wanted to put a TV in there you can it clips it goes in there as it's in the overhead locker behind your driver's seat you have your electrical power supply unit so this is just duplicated on the duplicated on the control panel that's your system shutdown button so if you didn't want a battery drain when storing you can turn that off but that will stop the solar panel charging the battery so keep it on you've got your 12 volt fuses which are all listed like so Good idea to go and get some um, spare 5s, 10s, 20s, 25 fuse, fuses, just standard blade fuses from Halfords, carry them with you. You've got your RCDs and circuit breakers and then these must stay on for your hot water, your space heater and your charger to work on mains electric. Above you've got your build number so if you ever need parts for the vehicle quote that number we'll then be able to quote it to Water Trail and they'll know what your vehicle is when it was built and what part is required and above you've got your max view um, sat system so turn the power on by this rocker switch and then turn the so the 
operate the dish either up or down, press this button, hold it in for to pull it down and press it once to put it up. It will then flash through 105 until it locks on Astro 2. That's what you want it to on number 2 and then it locks on Astro. If you didn't need to change the, um, the Astro you can press the SAT if you are going into another country but if you are in this country or France you can use Astro 2. To make the overcar bluten bed, double bed, simply pull towards you. The mattress then folds in half. You've then got the bar through here which clips on either side so this acts as a safety rail if you have children in there that roll around in the sleep to stop them falling. You've also got the ladder at the back which clips in here and stands down but when travelling you can fold it over and push it in just to give you a little bit more headroom from getting in the cab to in the motorhome. To open your gas locker you have an LPG labelled handle here so if you lift this up this then opens the gas locker outside the vehicle as there is no lock on there it is just a handle. To make your front dining area with your travelling belt into a bed lift the slat that goes here out like so lift it out you don't need that part get the table that's in the back bedroom and slide it in to the groove on here and in the groove here and then this seat here on the passenger side slides out and then use the cushions Turn them all upside down and you can use them to fill the space, like, like so. And you use the cushions to fill the space, use the base cushion, use one of the backrests like that, turn it upside down and put it in there, use the base cushion for this small L shape in there and then the backrest from the main seat in here and that is your space. And to get this table out of the way, you can loosen that off and you can tilt the table from being flat to standing up and stand behind the chair. To operate your TV, lower the catch, there is a lever here if it gets stuck. Press the magic eye and up here, the red eye until it goes blue. And with it being a a satellite you don't have to retune but you just use the source and you can flick between a moment where the world has changed and flick between that's by many Sa and we'll have, uh, satellite tv and dvd because there's dvd in the side you're watching bbc news i have the engine Once inside the cab, I will now go through all your cab controls, which are in your handbook as well. You've got your main head unit, so this is AM and FM radio, on radio. Or you can press media, which can be a CD, or down the bottom here you have USB and auxiliary inputs. You've got your nav. So you can navigate to set place, you can set your house. Um, I wouldn't advise you do set your home address. I'd advise you put somewhere near your home, just in case they do steal your motorhome, they know where you live. But this is just a Tom Tom um, van Pacific sat nav. So it isn't motorhome Pacific, but it is van, so it'll do the job. Phone, pair of phone, yes. Added a ask you to find you connect and make sure the pins match once that once you have done that on your device then it'll ask if you want to sync your contacts just press yes and then you are loaded in you can then use your bluetooth to stream music instead of connecting it more and more you've got your clock your outside temperature and your trip so you can view your trips on here as well as on the dash in between the speedo and rev count you can turn the screen off if you want, so if you've got the radio on on a night instead of the TV and the screen is a bit bright, you can turn the screen off until you touch it and it'll come back on. If 
you've got mute, you've got your volume, you've got your settings all in here, which is all explained in your handbook, so you can restore settings. But on the radio, you can press, you've got three buttons here, you can press to save, or you can press and you can get up to 12 stations saved there. Below, you've got your heating, so you've got your temperature, your fan speed, it must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is in the middle. The aircon then does surface the, the box at the top, which you can put any of your snacks in there, so your sweets, chocolate, little cans of pop for the road, instead of having them in the fridge, that's a good place to put them. And then you do have your distribution and your circulation. Coming down to the buttons on the front of the dash, you've got your heated mirrors, so these are good for when your mirrors, mirrors are wet or um, misty. You've got your button here which locks all three doors, so both car doors and habitation door. But it doesn't lock the garage or any locker doors, you must do that manually. But it does have central locking on the habitation door, so on and I just click the button and you're all locked in. You've got your hazards, you've got your hill descent control, which is pretty much useless on a manual gearbox. It's designed for automatics, you'd slow yourself down with the gears. And you've got your traction control, so you can turn your traction control off. So if you've been on a site um, and it's rained overnight and you're on a grass pitch instead of a hard standing pitch, turn your traction control off to get out instead of your wheels spinning. You've got two decent sized cup holders there. You've got a USB for charging and a 12 volt. You've got your glove box there. And on this motorhome, it is fit for gas door and your gas door adapters are in there and some spare locks for the cab doors. gearbox so it's up over and lift and your reverse camera works there that'll only come on when in reverse you can't have that on when traveling forward and then coming round to the drivers so on the wheel there you've got your all your steering wheel controls so you've got your mute volume you've got a hand you've got an assistance there so you can speak to it you've got your hands-free and you can scan through your radio channels to this side you've got your cruise control speed limiter lights and indicators and your wipers that side with your trip computer run so if i click this button here i'll we'll go through this screen here so your instant consumption your average consumption your average speed your time traveled you've got trip a and b so it's got two of them And then coming down to the driver's side right, you've got your fog lights and your headlight adjustment. Your mirror adjustment, so it does the top and the bottom, which is your blind spot. Your electric windows, which like this locks the, wind, the doors. And your handbrake. And then you've got your blackout blinds on your cab windows and your windscreen they are just magnetic so just clip in the middle so good tip is to put something around here if it is going to be a um, windy night because they might ping open and that's something you don't want now underneath the bonnet this is your secondary catch there just below above the auto trail badge you've got your main paint coat here which is a standard fade color you've got your weight plate when it was a fade chassis cab and your secondary conversion so it's 4250 gross vehicle weight if you were to use anything on that tow bar you can tow up to 5.5 ton which is the vehicle and whatever your tow combined here is your earth for a jump start and down here is your positive normally this catch would cover would be over it so put a screwdriver or a key in there if it is locked and then you can pull it back and put your jump leads on there for giving or receiving a bump start <laughs> Here is your oil filler and dipstick for checking your oil. And then these covers lift off for all your mechanical services. So you've got your brake fluid, radiator fluid, and the main one you're gonna need is your screen wash in the corner there. And that is underneath your bonnet. 